Well, if you just join us, you're welcome. You're watching News 9 here on Arise News, inching closer to Nigeria's election. And quite a number of issues happening at a speed of light. Let's now bring in the president of Nigerian Bar Association, Yakubu Mikel, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria. Yes, we're also bringing in the Force Public Relations Officer, Chief Superintendent of Police, Muiwa Adejobi. Well, let me start off uh, with uh, the NBA president. Uh, your association has been very, very concerned about latest happenings uh, here in the country as the country moves into the election. And uh, another very unfortunate incident has just happened in Nigeria's southeast region with the killing, uh, gruesome murder of uh, a candidate who is also a lawyer. Speak to us on uh, uh, how much of uh, concern your association uh, is having at this critical time uh, for Nigeria. Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, the Nigerian Bar Association is definitely concerned about the security situation in the country, not only when the life of um, a lawyer or a legal practitioner is involved or a judge. Uh, it is the concern of the Nigerian Bar Association uh, that the life or the lives and properties of Nigerians are not enjoying the level of security that we all deserve as a nation. So it's something that gives us uh, grave concern and um, uh, at this point perhaps what uh, I, I should do is to, to condemn in no uh, uncertain terms the killing of um, the Labour Party senatorial candidate of uh, Enugu East Senatorial District uh, who happens to be uh, a legal practitioner and uh, the pasture of Oji River uh, branch of the Nigerian Bar Association. That killing uh, was barbaric. That killing uh, was 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 evil, and uh, we condemn that that particular killing. And then uh, call on and government and all security agencies to step up uh, their game in ensuring that the lives and properties of Nigerians are protected. It is the only way we can have comfort to go into the election and exercise our franchise and the choice of who uh, would lead us. But this atmosphere can never guarantee free, fair and credible election. Absent security, there is no way we can all go out and express our franchise, our choice uh, of our preferred candidates because it means that um, with the use of force that we have seen against uh, uh, this our colleague, like uh, other Nigerians have suffered, it means that uh, some undue influence um, uh, is being uh, uh, asserted, you know, uh, on the electorate to influence their choice of uh, uh, their candidates. Right. Let me bring in the CSP here. Mwiwa Dijobi, I mean, you heard the NBA president there uh, actually kick the ball into your net saying that, look, a lot depends on security agencies to ensure that a safe environment is provided for Nigerians as they go to the polls on, I mean, in less than 48 hours. Now, what exactly is responsible for this optic in security challenges, killings, uh, I mean, just a few hours ago, we heard about the uh, Ebony situation uh, from Enugu, Imo, everywhere across the country. What exactly is responsible? Is it a failure of intelligence and we don't hear of arrests or even apprehension before these crimes happen? Well, it's quite unfortunate we recorded our incidents in um, Enugu, uh, and it's quite unfortunate. We sympathize with the, with the NBA. Uh, but let me say that we can't use a particular uh, case in a region to generalize that we don't have peace or safety in Nigeria. Uh, these uh, incidences are actually restricted to a particular region, and that is the southeastern part of Nigeria. We have not been recording this kind of incidents in other geopolitical zones per se, uh, which, of course, uh, like the case in um, uh, when the, uh, the Labour Party senatorial candidate was attacked, there were attacks on uh, some other uh, aspirants too. I, I was aware that the APC, one APC can candidate too, was attacked at uh, uh, a place in that state. And the same thing, PDP uh, candidate too was attacked in another region, like a simultaneous uh, attacks on these aspirants, these, sorry, these candidates. Uh, and I think we still 
I want to believe that it's the handiwork of these um, non-state actors who might likely want to, to attack or to run down the system. And like I always say, uh, that it's, it's, it's quite unfortunate that we're having uh, these, these uh, uh, non-state actors trying to create fears, trying to, to paint Nigeria unsafe to the whole world. But generally, Nigeria is safe apart from some of these uh, incidences we have, we have recorded. And it's quite unfortunate they are sending this bus signal out there. For, for the killing, for the alleged uh, killing at um, Ebonye, today up to now, the police is not aware of that uh, killing of the, the Abga chairman. Up to now, nobody, no official report. We got across to uh, all of them, the party uh, leadership in uh, Ebonye. They have not confirmed to us officially up to now. And the police is not in the know. So I don't want us to still believe that we have recorded another killing in Ebonye. So for now, we cannot confirm that. But generally, we can use what we have in this region to generalize that Nigeria it is not safe. It is not so. We are already... Why do you say we can't generalize? Sorry, let me put it. Um, Victoria Chintex, the Labour Party member in Benue State. I mean, that's not in the southeast. Uh, when you say it's limited to just one region, one part of the country, uh, is that the absolute truth? Uh, well, if, if, if I may say uh, not, 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 not restricted to that particular region, I'm talking of repeated uh, and incessant attacks on on individuals coupled with the uh, threats they've issued out to people not to come out, to, uh, to disabuse, uh, uh, to abuse minds of people, to create fears in them not to come out to exercise their franchise. So everything is connected, everything is tailored together. And that's why you see, apart from that incident in, in Benue, we can't not be counting incidences in the six geopolitical zones across uh, the country, but it is rampant in the uh, southeast, and with all this trade being issued uh, from various quarters in the southeast, telling people that they should not come out. And I always say that it's there is no how uh, if you tell people not to come out, it's a sort of disservice to yourselves in the region, to people in the region, because generally people will vote. The only thing we can record is low turnouts. People will see come out. Are, if you can hear me, I think uh, you just let me quickly uh, put in this before I come back to the NBA president. Uh, if you say this is restricted to a particular region, specifically the southeast, isn't that an indictment, knowing full well that the police already has an idea of what exactly is happening in the southeast, and uh, perhaps you should have been able to be for more security in that region? Well, uh, we, we have done our threat analysis. And so far, so good. We do more. We the most, uh, the, pass, the largest percentage of deployment uh, is, is channeled towards the southeastern part of Nigeria. And we are working with the, the governors of this region. And the IGP has done deployment of very senior uh, officers to go. The DIG from Southeast has been sent to this, the region to go and supervise election to go and talk to people. Apart from policing electoral process in the region, our job is to still make sure that we fortify this region so that we decimate the activities of these non-state actors. And we are now relenting on our hearts to make sure uh, that we, we do the needful to restore peace uh, to this region. And the operation uh, restore peace that was uh, floated by the Inspector General of Police uh, uh, like two years ago, are still I, I, I working get the point, and Muyua. they are still if there. You, if you can hear me, Muyua, just allow me to bring in the NBA president again. Thank you very much, uh, Muyua. I'll come back to you quickly here. Uh, Yakub Mikhail, you, uh, you, you've spoken, I recall, when you uh, came on uh, the saddle, you spoke uh, given concerns by the uh, Association of Happiness. You gave State of the Nation address, and security was topmost on that. Uh, now, speak to us on what you think. Uh, the country, specifically the secret agencies, should be doing uh, that perhaps uh, they haven't actually touched yet? Well, um, <clears throat> you would agree with me that um, I'm not a security man. Uh, I'm not a security personnel. We fight as lawyers. We don't fight with guns. We fight with words. And it is only the words that we have that we can use to describe the security situation. And uh, uh, we've just noted 
this particular incident and the incidents that go on across across the country. What, what do I think we should do? I, uh, it's obvious that the security agencies in this country are not as equipped as they should be. It is obvious that investments have not been made in the security uh, uh, sector of this country in the manner that we should have invested. And that is largely responsible for the kind of uh, incidents that we experience in the country and uh, what, what appears to be the inability of the security agencies to uh, deal with the situations that we are confronted with across the country is not unconnected with the lack of proper investment in, in the security sector, both in terms of uh, the manpower that we have, in terms of the equipment and, and all the things that the security agencies are supposed to have. Even the welfare of the security agencies is not something uh, that, that, um, that, that we've paid uh, attention to. Uh, to uh, so, so, so you really can't expect much from the security agencies. I'm not trying to condone all of the things, the lapses that we see with the security agencies, but it's also just right to put certain things in context. Okay. Uh, if you, to, to whom much is given, much is expected, but if, if you don't give much to someone, then it would be unfair to expect him uh, to, to do a lot. But having right. said that, mm -hmm. and with what uh, my good friend said, uh, and you made the point, if you have identified a particular area and there are recurring incidents of uh, uh, insecurity uh, situations, killings have gone on in Imo State, I mean, courts have been burnt down, lawyers and judges mm -hmm. have been gone down in the premises of the court. We haven't seen the kind of response that we expect from the law enforcement agencies. And it gives us uh, grave concern. And I say this not just for members of the legal profession, I say this for every Nigerian, because the Nigerian Bar Association is concerned about the, the protection of the lives and the properties of every Nigerian in this country. That is what we are committed to, that is what we stand for, and that is what we will continue to speak for. Right. Uh, uh, Mr. Mwiwa uh, Jobi, you heard the NBA president there saying, look, it will be unfair to expect so much uh, from the police, bearing in mind, according to what is said now, uh, the paucity of you know, equipment, maybe morale, and, and all that you need to actually ensure that you do your job effectively, whether it's elections or wherever the need uh, to ensure security uh, arises. What exactly is the situation in terms of welfare, especially as uh, police officers, you know, are expected to man the elections? And is there a problem of capacity or capability in ensuring, and uh, not just apprehending or stopping this you know, violent attacks or crimes before they happen, but to actually, uh, you know, arrest, investigate, and uh, prosecute those found wanting. What exactly is missing? Generally, the, the, the police is just the lead or coordinating agency when it comes to election security management. Other security agencies are involved, uh, are members of ISIS, that is interagency, Continuing Committee on Election Security, all of them are involved, including the military. So we have done deployment based on our threat analysis. We have done deployment to all the polling units, uh, so local government areas, any facilities, those that will do uh, escorts for materials, any officials, protect observers, and all of them. We, we have done this, and we are optimistic that deployment is okay enough. We have done deployment for restriction of movement so that we can uh, curtail excessiveness of certain individuals who may want to go out there to cause trouble. And generally, our men that are going to be uh, on election duty, they are, they are to be paid their allowances. As I speak with you, they have commenced uh, the payment of the allowances for this first, uh, the first leg of the general elections, that is presidential and national assembly election that is coming up on 25th. And of course, they will still give them certain allowances for the second leg, that is gubernatorial and uh, House of Assembly elections across the country. Uh, we have provided uh, body personal uh, protective equipment for them, the body armor, bulletproof vest, and the likes. Recently, the president obtained some of these uh, state of the art equipment for us, including uh, non leather weapons that we may use for uh, crowd control so that we not be using forces at all times to disperse any protest. So we have taken care of uh, the election issues and post-election issues that may come up 
after the general elections. So generally, we are working together with all agencies, and we have taken drone deployment to all polling units in the four, four, seven, seven, four local government areas we have uh, in Nigeria. So we are good to go on that. And the, the, where we're having issues like the Southeast, uh, deployment have been done again. Even today, additional deployment uh, uh, has been done in that area. And we are hopeful that we will be able to curtail the excessiveness of these non-state actors who believe that they, if they want to attack the state, the, the, the government, they need to attack even security operatives. You know, you are not spared as well. But I have mean, lost some of our men to these to attacks, yeah. and we are mindful of that. So we have done what we should do, and we are still, there's room for improvement. We can still do better. Let's close with uh, the NBA president, uh, Yakubu Mikhail. Uh, you've identified quite a number of issues, and uh, quickly on Saturday, the National Assembly election will also hold. Uh, is the NBA looking to also, you know, bringing up some form of bills uh, to help uh, solve some teething security challenges that the country is going through at the moment? Well, le let me say that for the purposes of this election, uh, the Nigerian Bar Association has a um, uh, thousand observers that have been accredited by ADEC to observe the election. The Nigerian Bar Association has 128 branches across the country, and uh, 1,000 of our members have been accredited. And we've also encouraged our members who would go to various polling units across the country to also observe the election. They observe the election, we've designed the form that is going to, it's a web-based form that you can capture incidents at polling units. You can also do videos, upload and send to us. We are going to have uh, uh, a situation room at the MBA house, uh, the MBA house along Muhammad Buhari Way. There we'll be receiving all the reports from all the branches so we can have a sense of what is going on across the country. Are we proposing bills? Yes, there are concerns about things that uh, with, with uh, the, the experiment of even the 2022 uh, Act, Electoral Act, mm -hmm. uh, that have been uh, enacted, and, and also certain constitutional provisions. Uh, we've looked at them. Uh, we believe that uh, the, some constitutional uh, amendments are necessary for us to, uh, to, to open up the political space. And I can say this concerning the need for us to have an independent candidature that provision has to be made available uh, under the constitution so that and we are not before we let you go yes, voting because exactly. your, your bar has actually uh, shown nigerians that uh, it is possible yes so so uh, we we did that it was uh, uh, an electronic uh, voting system that we adopted for uh, even my election that was something that we introduced uh, in the amendment to the uh, constitution in 2015 and uh, from that moment, we've been having that election, and it's been quite successful. I had cause to uh, engage the chairman of uh, uh, INEC on this, and uh, uh, the use of beavers and some other uh, electronic devices that have been deployed for this election is, is th they are preparatory towards uh, 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 the electronic uh, platform that I, I believe INEC is. Uh, uh, eventually going to launch for the proposal of election right. and you must understand that the prop the necessary infrastructure must be put in place for them to be able to do that I can understand that for us in the Nigerian Bar Association we did that successfully because of the number of our members that we have to contend with for the purpose of the election a lot has to be done for the purpose of a national election so the kind of infrastructure that you need to put in place the kind of manpower and then the understanding the literacy level is also something that we have to consider so right. in doing that we have to do that in phases taking into account our peculiarities as a nation uh, in, uh, in, in, in putting up such electronic platforms for, for the purposes of election. Yes, we encourage that. It's something that is seamless. It will reduce right. the exposure of electorate. I mean, you sit in your house, you cast your vote. Chances are that nobody is going to walk into your room uh, to, to harm you, unlike when you have to all congregate at the poly unit to do this. We'll have to leave it there. Yakubu Mekia, also advocate of Nigeria, is president of the Nigerian Bar Association. We've also been joined by CSP Moiwa, a DJB police public relations officer. Both of you gentlemen, thanks for joining us.